Mark Gibson Human Risk Channel. Accountant with designation CPA, MBA, CMA, ACPA, ASA Australia. Enjoy learning! Okay, so good morning class and welcome to your Valuation Concepts and Methodologies class. Today we'll discuss about the fundamental principles of valuation. But before that, let's uh, identify the course objectives. No? So number one, uh, towards the end of this discussion, we'll make sure to achieve or to tick all these objectives. No? So number one, interpret the different concepts of value, identify the roles of valuation in business, understand the valuation process, identify key principles in valuation, and finally understand the risk involved in valuation. Of course, since our, our uh, subject is valuation concepts and methodologies, let's first define what valuation is. No? So simply class, valuation is the estimation of an asset's value based on variables perceived to be related to future investment returns on comparison with similar assets or when relevant on estimates of immediate liquidation proceeds. So uh, basically, it's a, simply an estimation of an asset's value looking into future investment returns. No? So remember, uh, when we did the capital budgeting, no? so uh, where limited, limited funds um, is available. So uh, we have identified different projects. We compared similar projects. No? And then from there, we decide. No? So there's also valuation and at the same time, um, um, options and then alternatives are given. And then finally, we recommend no? which one to uh, pursue. No? So valuation places great emphasis on the professional judgment. So class, as accountant or as a professional, we have the so-called uh, professional judgment and this actually uh, separates a uh, professional no, from the other other occupation no? so basically professional judgment is simply your ability to diagnose and at the same time solve uh, problems no so uh, simply uh, in, in valuation concepts and methodologies there are an uh, element of um, professional judgment involved. No? So mostly it deals with projections about future events. No? Um, so that's valuation. Now the value of business can be basically linked to three major uh, factors. So number one, current operations. How is the operating performance of the firm in recent year? No? So Simply class, no? so these three factors can be used as the guiding compass. No? So um, on how to evaluate the, the business. No? So number two, future prospects. No? So what is the long-term strategic direction of the company? So remember, uh, in, in uh, conceptualizing uh, strategies, we have tactical and strategic uh, plan. No? So Simply, uh, when we say tactical, these are this in, includes um, short-term plans, uh, and then strategic would be a the long-term uh, plans of the business. No? So, and of course, number three, embedded risks. No? So, what are the business risks involved in in running the business? No? So of course, there's always risk present. No, but uh, we should know. What are these embedded risks? No, so, for example, you're engaged in uh, tobacco manufacturing. No, sabi natin tobacco. No, and then back then, um, there was the sin tax uh, implemented. No, so sin tax bill was um, uh, put into implementation. No, and so uh, basically, what sin tax did is uh, it taxed uh, these tobacco products enormously. So, kung mas mataas ang tax, of course, uh, these tobacco manufacturers will tend to uh, also increase the selling price. No? So, while uh, in the short run, uh, they experience a decline uh, in, in their numbers, no? in, their, in their revenues, pero 
napatunayan na ang mga Filipino talaga is they're really into smoking no so while before no uh, initially when the syntax bill was introduced uh, there was a decline in the in the revenue in in the in the numbers no uh, but then uh, siguro dahil nakakuha ng paraan no syempre no uh, secret smoking is also an addiction eh, no? so uh, they were able to source out kaya naman pala so they uh, But initially, those are the uh, risks involved in the tobacco manufacturing. Okay, so we go now to different uh, concepts of value. So first, we have this intrinsic value. So intrinsic value in general is defined as the fair or inherent value of any asset. So um, it, Basically, intrinsic value, we uh, use it to define the value of company stock. No? So this is the true value or the perceived value, how we perceive the value of, uh, say, ABS-CBN stock no? at, 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 uh, at this stage. No? So with, the, with their franchise being uh, stopped, uh, actually, they, they, were, they were not given a... They were not the franchise was not renewed, no. So therefore, there's a there's a decrease in the stock price of ABS-CBN. But then, the intrinsic value could be higher than the market value. Why? Uh, well, as you know, ABS-CBN naman talaga is 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 really a uh, it's the number one uh, uh, broadcasting company in the Philippines. No, but right now because they don't have the franchise, um, there's been a decline in the in the market price of their stock no in fact i'll be discussing more of that in this slide no so intrinsic value is the perceptional value of the stock which has considered all the factors qualitative and quantitative while valuing the stock no so technically it is defined as the present value of all free cash flows discounted at the rate of weighted average cost of capital no but uh, as probably at this stage no let's uh, Let's focus more on the definition and uh, uh, focus also on, on the uh, practical um, use of intrinsic value. No? So uh, let's have ABS-CBN as an example. No? So as you know, it's, it's one of the, if not the biggest, no? so one of the biggest uh, broadcasting company in the Philippines. No? So When we say intrinsic value, it's the uh, true value of the uh, of the stock, no? So taking into account the quantitative factors. So when we say quantitative factors, the sales, earnings, capital, uh, all other information available in in the financial statement, basically, no. But uh, also it it includes qualitative factors, no? So qualitative factors um, will include past track record, goodwill, branding, management quality. Uh, and company's reputation no uh, in in general so so if if we're going to say assess the intrinsic value of um, abs cbn ano kaya sila dito sa dalawa no so intrinsic value is uh, uh, greater than the market value uh, investor will look at it as an opportunity and buy the stock of course um Sabi kasi natin, di ba, intrinsic value is the true value, no? Now, if we compare it to the market value and if it if and when we found it to be uh, greater than the market value, of course, it's a signal, no, to investors that to buy this stock because there's an opportunity that the market value will also grow equal to the intrinsic value. Now, what if the intrinsic value is less than the market value? No? So, uh, in in that case, we can conclude that the stock is uh, considered to be overpriced. No, and of course, uh, if this is the situation, investors will tend to just sell the, these stocks and move on. No, move uh, exit from it. No? So that's intrinsic value. Now, uh, going back to ABS-CBN, no, it's this is just a personal opinion lang naman, no? So while the the market price at this stage for abs cbn is declining compared to where 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 were they uh, before you know before the the franchise uh, issue no? so i think um, the intrinsic value is higher because of the reputation that abs cbn um, 
was able to build no over the years. All right. Next, we have this going concern value. Of course, going concern value follows the going concern assumption. It assumes that the enterprise will continue to operate in the foreseeable future. So when we say, uh, in fact, class, uh, in, in the financial statement and reporting, um, uh, it's it's part of the integral say uh, required or mandatory uh, report to include a going concern assumption no so uh, and it, it it it's going to be signed by the ceo ceo and the cfo and then audited by the uh, external auditors no so meaning uh, you have to make sure that it's being put in the, in the report that the um, that the the company uh, prepares it re its records on a going concern assumption. No? Kaya nga napansin mo dito sa illustration natin, it's just a sari-sari store but envisioning to become a department store. No? That's the going concern assumption. All right. Okay. Next, we have the liquidation value. So it refers to the net amount of uh, net amount that would be realized if the business is terminated and the net assets are sold piecemeal. No? So uh, in liquidation value, uh, we can simply assume that the enterprise is already in dissolution stage. So meaning, magsasara na, so they have to account to, to value their uh, net assets no? uh, in order to determine the, uh, the value of the entity. So usually, ang nag, uh, undergo na uh, I mean entities who follow uh, the liquidation value are those uh, entities on financial distress. No? So ito yung mga uh, in in the risk of um, uh, stopping the operation. No? So of course, I think uh, this one is the mo uh, where you are. You, most of you are most comfortable or most uh, uh, inclined with. No? So fair market value. Simply, when we say fair market value, this is a price where there is a willing seller to sell and a willing buyer to buy. No? So that's fair market value. So let's go now to the roles of valuation in business. No? So what are the roles of valuation in business? No? Uh, there are a number of, um, uh, say, functions where uh, valuation is necessary no? in business. So number one, in portfolio management, in the analysis of business transactions, third, in corporate finance, and number four, in legal and tax purposes. No? So let's um, discuss this, that one by one. So in portfolio management class, simply, um, sipi mo lang, di ba sabi, do not put all your eggs in one basket. No? So simply, uh, what's that uh, saying is telling us, uh, do not invest in one industry alone. No? So in portfolio management, particularly in this, uh, in this topic, we are referring to uh, stock investment. No? So in stock investment, sabi natin, you don't want to uh, put all your investments in one industry. E paano kung halimbawa that industry has been disrupted with uh, economic, um, say, disturbances? So, so for example, uh, back in 2009, back in 2012, I think, uh, maximum drug retail price law was introduced. No? So basically, what uh, this MDRP is, uh, uh, has done is to put the maximum price for med medicines. No? So imagine if you have invested in a pharmaceutical, in huge multinational pharmaceutical companies. And as you know, these huge multinational, multinational companies, they invest more on research. No? They invest more on uh, uh, science. No? So, hindi lang yan basta tinimpla and then gamot na. So, there's um, uh, really uh, world-class facilities, top-of-the-line um, 
machines involved no to manufacture the product but then with the imposition of MDRP sinet nila yung price no so imagine Pfizer uh, GSK JNJ and other uh, other multinational companies competing with Unilab Unilab is a generic company competing with RightMed no uh, Watson Generics no so it 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 be uh well at that time it was really uh, they, they, those companies were were impacted by that uh, by that law no? so simply in portfolio management plus um, there are these players no so four uh, actually five players involved no? then let's let's go to uh, each of these player one by one no? so fundamental analyst so fundamental analyst these are persons who are interested in understanding and measuring the intrinsic value of a firm. As we uh, when we say intrinsic value, this is a true value of the uh, equity uh, or, or of the stock. No? So taking into account the qualitative and at the same time quantitative factors uh, involved. No? And then we have this activist investors. So activist investors, basically these are investors who tend to look into companies under poor management. No? So ito yung mga nasa bingit na ng pagsasara. Parang ganun. No? And then they usually do takeovers and turn around this uh, uh these companies no so that's activist investors and then number three charities also na isip agad charities no baka char char lang no so basahin nga natin it relies on the concept that stock prices are significantly influenced by how investors think and act no? so talagang char nga no so kung ano yung yan kasi lagi ko naririnig sa inyo so kung ano yung uh, iniisip daw ng investors how how investors think and act no so that's how uh, they put valuation on certain stock prices no so that's how um charities uh, rely their their valuation in fact they also use KPIs no so KPIs these are key performance indicators uh, basically trying to compare uh, the results of one company but within the same industry no so it could be uh, Pfizer uh, J and J or or GSK no being compared to other other companies within within the same industry no so that's charities and then we have sell side or buy side analysts. So sell side uh, analysts they they issue valuation judgment. So paano yan? Oh, so class, um, there's a video on stock uh, stock investment which I'm also going to share with you just to uh, uh, just to give highlights on how sell side analysts work no so basically uh, say sell side analysts are being employed by a broker no so brokers syempre, uh, if you do stock investment you can't really go to go directly to philippine stock exchange no there there are brokers no middleman no so these brokers uh, that's where you uh, buy or sell or they Basically, you use their platforms in order to invest uh, on stock, no trade trading in the Philippine Stock Exchange. No? So now, this sell side, they are issue valuation judgment, no. So what to buy, what to sell, no. So they 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 give you a table, no, uh, and then where you can really base your decision from, no. So what's a buy side analyst, naman? Buy side analyst, they look specific investment options, no. Uh, let's just say uh, buy side analyst is kind of similar with a fundamental analyst in such a way that they look into the true value also of the equity. No? So they perform more in-depth um, analysis of a firm and engage in more rigorous stock selection methodologies. No? So that's a buy side analyst. Okay. Now uh, let's identify the roles of valuation in the analysis of business transaction no? so number one acquisition so basically acquisition is um 
usually has two parties, the buying firm and the selling firm. No? So siguro uh, a good example of this um, would be the talk between GMA and the TB5 before. No? So it's almost, um, almost a done deal, but then they were not able to agree on the valuation uh, price of GMA no so at that time no so akala natin magmo-merge na uh, akala natin actually it's not merger akala natin um TB5 will acquire GMA at that time no and merger i think sinasabi ko kanina uh merger is a general term which describes the transaction wherein two companies had their uh, assets combined to form a wholly new entity. Siguro one good example niyan is yung um, um, ginagawa ng MPIC, yung uh, hosp- uh, group of hospitals no owned and managed by Mani Panghilinan Group. No? So what they're, what they're doing is actually they're uh, buying out um, uh, different private hospitals around the Philippines and then put it in one umbrella. No? So that's MPIC group. Then we have divestiture, sale of a major component or segment of a business to another company. So a good example of this would be the consumer health uh, segment of uh, Pfizer. No? So if you, if, you, if you can recall yung Centrum, complete from A to Z. No? So yan, yung naalala ko pa nga before, si Piolo yan, saka si Angel Luxin, no? So right now, that part of... Um, Uh, segment no it's called consumer health segment of Pfizer was already sold to uh, GSK no kung yun napapansin mo kung nanonood ka ng commercial it's Jericho right now and and uh, General Mercado but the logo it's it's uh, already been replaced no so from Pfizer it's now GSK no so that's um divestiture number four, spin off Uh, separating a segment or component business and transforming them into a separate legal entity. So uh, one good example is another segment of Pfizer called Animal Health no? because of um, really the opportunity uh, of that segment. No? So what they did is to separate it from Pfizer and build a separate entity out of, uh, out of it. And finally, we have leverage buyout, acquisition of another business by using significant debt, which uses the acquired business as collateral. So simply, um, you're you're simply using the acquired uh, entity as collateral for the loan. So that's leverage buyout. Okay. Next is corporate finance. No? So let's define first the function of corporate finance no? in order for us to understand the, uh, understand the role of valuation here. No? So simply class, di ba, uh, ang, ang goal natin, di ba, sabi, account, the accounting goal is to maximize shareholders' wealth. Di ba? So corporate finance involves managing firm's capital structure, so including uh, funding sources and strategies within the business, which uh, the business should pursue to maximize firm value. So simply, corporate finance is managing the um, resources of the business. Now, in terms of small businesses, so sabihin natin na... Uh, small businesses they use valuation in order for in order for them to get capital from uh, private entities no uh, so uh, siguro uh, one good example of this is uh, mang inasal no prior to being uh, being purchased by Jollibee Food Corporation so uh, Back then, they, they were just a small small business player in, in the food industry. And then uh, Jollibee Food Corporation uh, came, to, came to the picture, and now it's, it's part of JFC. No? And of course, um, in, in terms of larger businesses, uh, one good example is Mont Nissin. No? So Mont Nissin, right now... Um, uh, Uh, they went public no so from from being a private company they they uh, listed their company in philippine stock exchange uh, went into initial public offering and then of course uh, uh, they mentioned the man that 
the their reason why they went public is to really get additional funds no, for expansion. So that's how uh, larger businesses uh, do. Uh, I mean, need valuation in order to es- estimate the price they're going to fetch in the stock market. So that's corporate finance. Okay, so we'll discuss valuation process next. No? So in valuation process, basically we have five steps. No? So number one is to understand the business. Now, in order for us to understand the business, we should know the ins and outs of our business. So meaning ins, so we, we should know what are, what are our strengths. And outs, we should also know what are the strengths of the other parties involved within the same industry? No, so we call them rivals, no, or competitors. So, to understand the business, there are tools available for us. One of which is the so-called Michael Porter's five forces. Now, what's flash in your screen basically is the uh, the one I used no, when I uh, completed my paper for my master's degree. So I use Pfizer, of course, in order for me to understand Pfizer business. I would I, I use five porters, five porters. No, so Michael Michael Porter's five forces. No, so what are those forces? No? So number one. Rivalry of competition or industry rivalry. It refers to the nature and intensity of rivalry between market players in the industry. So questions like, um, are there increasing number of pharmaceutical companies in the Philippines? If yes, how's the in- industry growth rate? Is it growing or is it declining? Uh, how did the maximum drug retail price um impacted these entities no? so those those types of questions and then of course uh, if you're if you're trying to understand the the business you have to uh, understand also uh, this force says no so whether it's strong or weak or moderate no because from there you can build strategies no uh, next we have potential for new entrants so when we say potential for new entrants, it refers to the barriers to entry to industry by new market players. No? So uh, are there uh, regulatory environment involved? How's the investment? So is it really huge? No? So that um, only, only players with huge capital investment can, can, can enter the market? No? Uh, of course, uh, there's prevalent uh, entry of different uh, phar- pharmacies no among business conglomerates so you know uh, say uh, for example uh, sm no sm owns watson no they, they it's a franchise from hong kong if i'm not mistaken but then uh, watson also now have uh, watson generics no so things like that uh, next, we have bargaining powers of bargaining power of suppliers. No, so when we say bargaining power of suppliers, it's the uh, power of the supplier to negotiate better terms. No, of course, uh, if your supplier can be able to negotiate for a better term, ergo, um, this will tend to make your the, the company profits a lesser no or, or lower in in that case no then there's the bargaining power of buyers no so uh, as you know uh, if if it if the buyer's power is really strong then <clears throat> it will impact our uh, sales revenue no so what are uh, what are the considerations that i've focus on no, in determining the bargaining power of buyers no, for Pfizer. So uh, there's the need for medicine. Of course, uh, if you're a patient, no, you, you only refer to the prescription uh, from your physician and there's really, sometimes there's no option for you just simply to buy it. No? So that's uh, also affecting the bargaining power of the buyer. And finally, potential for substitutes. No, so 
think of uh, Pfizer, no? Ano ba yung pwedeng imagine, no? Ang nireseta sa iyo for painkiller is a uh, antibiotics uh, Zitromax, no? So one one famous brand of Pfizer. And yet what you uh, what people do as an alternative or as a substitute they just go to their backyard and look for oregano no? so and other herb, herbal medicine so and, and um at that time i found it to be weak no? so meaning people or most filipinos they really tend to follow uh, prescriptions made by their uh, physicians no? so that's porter five forces no? All right. No. So, before we go to the next step, uh, let me also discuss with you the different generic uh, strategies. No. And then uh, later on, we'll we'll talk about or let's together. No. Let's assess uh, which strategy uh, does Pfizer uh, use in their business. No. So, the three generic corporate strategies uh, to achieve competitive advantage would be. Number one, cost leadership. So when we say cost leadership, it relates to the incurrence of the lowest cost among market players with quality that is comparable to competitors allow the firm to price products around the industry average. No? So let's take Myra E. Alam naman yung Myra E, di ba? Lagi mo nakikita sa commercial, beautiful ladies walking down the road. Uh, then, oh, uy, mukhang naka Myra E. Mga ganyan, di ba? So, Myra E kasi, siya, syempre, ang, 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 ang main ingredient niyan is vitamin E. So, skin vitamins. No? So, syempre, glowing skin. Yan, yan ang promise ng vitamin E. And uh, ano ba yung counterpart niyan? The branded one is Stress Tab. No? And Stress Tab, along with vitamin, kaya nga sinabi, uy, stress ka, di ba? Sa commercial din, no? Mukha kang stress. No? So, nag-stress tab. Eh, pero ang stress tab kasi, all, uh, aside from vitamin E, it also includes different or many other uh, vitamins. no? But then, yun na nga. Sobrang mura ng Myri E compared to stress tab. No? So, that's a, a, an example of cost leadership. No? So, the lower the, uh, the cost, uh, I mean, the lower the cost, sometimes, uh, the quality suffers you know so and that's basically what happens uh, generally no? so next we have differentiation differentiation firms tend to uh, offer differentiated or unique product or service characteristics that customers are willing to pay for additional premium siguro Classic example niyan is iPhone. And they just released a new uh, new iPhone uh, a few weeks ago compared to a Cherry Mobile. So parehas naman silang uh, smartphone. Ang kaibahan lang, uh, since Apple, uh, use, uh, Apple uses differentiation strategy, eh, they made sure that the, the Apple will... Uh, work longer time no because of the uh, of longer uh, battery life tapos mas okay yung camera compared to Cherry Mobile and uh, Cherry Mobile I think uh, uh, they, they're catering a low uh, income uh, category no so uh, while they they function uh, similar uh, there's well, the battery life is shorter for, for Cherry Mobile. Tapos siguro yung camera is normal lang. No? So things like that. Again, in differentiation, basically it's that strategy uh, where you place uh, improvements to your product, but at the same time, with the underlying uh, expectation, you can also put uh, additional premium. No? So mas, ma mas mahal, parang ganun. And finally, focus. No? So basically, focus is a combination of cost, leadership, and differentiation. So firms are identifying specific demographic segment or category segment to focus on by using cost leadership strategy or differentiation strategy. Siguro ang good example nito would be Greenbelt. 
as compared to SM department store. No? So, pag pumunta ka ng green belt, ayun, kita mo doon lahat ng mga luxury items, branded items, uh, ito yung mga uh, nasa glass pa, no? sa Rolex, ano pa ba. Uh, compared to uh, SM department store, syempre, SM department department store caters to general public naman. Ano? So, yun. Uh, pag sinabi natin focus, strategy, it could be one Uh, it could be uh, cost leadership or differentiation. Yung example ko kanina would um, probably uh, it's a focus on uh, differentiation strategy. No? Kasi nga, um, syempre, green, green belt, they cater more on the high income uh, category. No? Kasi nga, sino bang bibili ng Rolex, di ba? So they're they're targeting a certain uh, category segment no, to focus on their needs. So that's step one, and then step two, forecasting financial performance. And of course, when we speak of financial performance, we're talking of the income statement. And usually, uh, when we forecast financial state, uh, when we forecast income statement, we use trends. No. Now there are two different approaches, no, in uh, uh, in forecasting. So we have top-down forecasting approach. It's uh, the forecast starts from international or national macroeconomic projections with utmost consideration to industry-specific forecast. So pane, pag sinabi natin top-down, you have to uh, check first the macro environment no so um, you're, you're you're really checking into the economic condition of uh, the country uh, so for 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 uh, instant instance Pfizer Philippines no obviously uh, it caters to the Philippine market uh, when we're, if we're going to do top down forecasting approach so of course we need to see ano ba muna yung increase in the growth rate within the Philippine market? From there, pwede kami kumuha na ano ba, from this uh, market share, ilang percent dyan yung pwede namin i-target. And then from there, dun na. Uh, I-project mo, i-forecast mo na yung sales mo. And then, syempre, kaya nga top down. Na. So it starts from the top going down. Ano naman tong bottom-up forecasting approach? So remember class, the concept of decentralization. So in decentralization, basically managers are given um, are, are being are given the responsibility to manage their respective departments. No? So kaya sinabi natin bottom up. So it, it starts from the lowest, lower levels of the firm. No? So going up. Um, so it could be a production forecasting their uh, production for the for the uh, next year or years to come and then from there uh, you just build on no? uh, till um, you come up with a full income statement no? so that's forecasting financial performance number three is selecting the right valuation model basically class this number three this will be the entire Uh, discussion of valuation concept and methodologies. So this will be uh, discussed um, uh, in all chapters of the book. So we'll focus uh, on this or, or on, on step three uh, in the coming sessions. Number four, preparing the valuation model based on forecast. So simply uh, right after uh, selecting or deciding what valuation model to use, you simply just Use it no, in, in doing your forecast. And finally, uh, apply it, evaluate, conclude, and ultimately recommend no, based on this uh, forecast and the valuation method. And yes, that ends my discussion on the fundamental of uh, fundamental principles of valuation. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. So thank you for attending my class and thank you for listening attentively. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye. This is the Year Instructor, Mark Gibson. Thank you for learning with us. See you in our next discussion. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya!